So right here we have our shade uh, nodes from what we created in our last video. And what we need to do is add some other nodes. So let's get started. So first we gotta do Shift A. We're gonna get our texture coordinate. And then we're gonna get our mapping node by right, doing Shift A, just search it up. And there we go. After that, uh, we need to basically attach this UV node. Uh, attach it right here. Take this vector dot and just attach it to this area. So the reason why I'm doing this is because basically now you can affect the image um, position, rotation, or scale. So like for instance, if you actually take a look here, you can change the rotation here. It's kind of weird, even though it says location, you can change the rotation like this. This one actually like kind of stretches the texture inward. And you change this, you can change Y. This kind of like, it's kind of like rotating in the Z axis, which is a bit weird. And let's see, Z, this one, probably not gonna use it. You can also like do it for um, the scale values, but probably not gonna use that. Um, but I do recommend testing it out so you guys can get a feel for how it kind of works. So after that, uh, we need to get a Vorno texture node. And if you guys actually watched my really, really old slash tutorial, I really love Vorno texture because it's very useful for like creating anime VFX and all these particles that kind of like disappear. And a lot of like VFX artists use it. So what we're gonna do here is select these two nodes. We're gonna do Shift D, and then we're gonna do Shift A to get our Vorno texture. So let's do that here. We're actually gonna do attach this right here. And after that, we need to get our color ramp node. So Shift A, color ramp, attach it right here. Attach the distance to FAC. And now we have this. So um, the thing is like, we want the Vorno texture to basically make this slash disappear only in the slash area. And if you guys actually watched my last video, basically this is like the masking data uh, where it shows like where like the slash should be, the color where it should be. So basically we need to affect this color only. So in order to do that, we're going to use a mix RGB. And basically it mixes the color together. So what we're gonna do is add this Vorno texture right here. Um, so then basically, um, this is now the Vorno texture is like the masking, and base basically like this whole slash um, texture is gonna be based on where the Vorno texture is showing the color or not. So we're gonna actually make this white because we wanna make this um, back area all disappear. And if you actually change this color ramp node, um, which is attached, attached to the Vorno texture, you can see that it's actually making the slash disappear. So if you actually bring this in, it's actually making this um, pretty dark. But let's say if you're moving this uh, node all the way back here, it's gonna make it disappear. So we're actually gonna bring this in all the way down so you get a complete slash and then um, let's actually increase the scale of this. So you can increase, um, basically what happened if you do that is now you get this really funky looking um, texture. Well, something weird happened. Oh, I'll actually click this or what the heck? Okay, I don't know what just happened, but like something deleted and not, I'm not sure. But yeah, if you increase the scale, now uh, you can see more of the Vorno texture. Honestly, this looks ugly, so I'm gonna keep it like around 20, something around there. And what you can do actually is, let's bring this here. You can actually um, change the scale of the Vorno texture if you have this. So you can actually increase this X or decrease it as you can see it's actually creating this. Uh, honestly, I don't really like that, so I'm just going to keep that one. And actually, um, we're going to actually flip this. And what this does is basically now um, it's kind of like inverting the Vorno texture. So instead of like having all these dots on the slash, now you can see, oh, what the heck? 
I don't know why I keep getting that weird thing. But now we're inverting the the basically now we're inverting the Voronoi texture. So instead of all these dots, now we have these gaps. So we're gonna do this. Um, we're actually gonna actually I want to move this white here. Make it look like there's no Voronoi texture at all. Just move this really close here. And yeah, so you can just like mess with these values and all that just to make just to um, basically adjust how you want your Vorno texture to look like. And after that, now we need to get to the animation part. So first we're going to click layout, click this button. And before we're going to get started on the animation, first we need to change this end value to 64. Um, the reason why I chose 64 is because I want to create 16 images of our slash. And basically 64 um, divided by 16 is a whole number. So that's why um, I chose 64. So after that, um, make sure you click this button. Um, not this one, this one. Um, make sure the frame rate is pretty high because then it makes this like pretty smooth. So you can actually get a really nice result. Honestly, it doesn't really change anything, but uh, it just looks better in Blender. So now you have a higher frame rate. And then let's go back to the shading editor. And basically um, for this, um, we're basically gonna make the slash first um, transparent. Well, not transparent, but like just completely gone, but later appear really fast. And then we're gonna make it slowly disappear. So if that doesn't make sense, that's okay. Um, first we'll actually go to the first frame. And make sure this is turned on. And then after that, we're going to go shading editor. And to make this whole slash kind of like disappear, we basically need to make move this, um, which is the color ramp, which is attached to the Vorno texture. So we're going to move this marker all the way down here. We're going to move this um, white marker down here. And that should be good. So now after that, we're going to right click on this position and basically insert a keyframe. And make sure, make sure. Um, you actually insert a keyframe for both of these markers or else this won't work. So we're going to insert here, insert here. And now after that, we're going to go back to layout. And I'm going to move this um, blue thing to keyframe bot 10. And the reason is because that's where I want the slash to appear. I want it to make it quick snap. Uh, I want it to make it appear really quickly. So what I'm going to do is actually move this white marker all the way down here and then move this black marker all the way down here. And then I'm going to and I'm going to insert a keyframe for both of these markers. So if I can right click. It's so hard to right click on a mouse pad. I swear. What the Okay, replace keyframe if that works. I'm going to click this white marker if I can and insert keyframe. Okay, so now if you click spacebar, it basically plays the animation. You can see it appears really fast, but we still don't have like the disappearing effect where the, like, the slash um, disappears. So what we need to do is actually go to layout, um, dra drag this blue thing all the way to the last keyframe, which is 64. And we're gonna adjust this um, shade editor. So we're going to go back to this color ramp, which is attached to this Vorno texture. And basically, we're going to drag these two markers all the way down where we actually started. So we're going to move this here. Going to click this, right click this, and insert a keyframe if I can. Actually looks like it's inserted. Yeah. If it actually appears yellow, that means it's inserted. So I'm just going to right click if I can. I don't know why it doesn't work. Well. I guess it works now. It's yellow now. And you click spacebar. Now it should kind of like give this disappearing effect. So now we have this. Uh, the problem about this is that this slash looks really still. Um, it needs a bit of rotation. So um, basically we're going to add a bit of randomness to this and a bit of rotation. Not too much because we're actually going to do real rotation inside Roblox Studio, but just a bit inside here. So what we're going to do is we're going to first actually adjust the Vorano texture. So we're going to go layout, click, um, basically 
drag this blue thing all the way to keyframe one. And then we're gonna add keyframes to rotation. So if I can do that, insert keyframe, and then we're gonna move this blue thing all the way to the end, 64. And I'm basically gonna change the Z value um, just a bit. Actually not Z value, but um, Y value, so like 30. And if you like slowly look at this, it's kind of like this Vorno texture is kind of going back and forth. So basically it gives a bit of more randomness, um, but that's not enough because I want to affect other values. So let's actually change the Z to maybe like 15. And you can see how it's like kind of wobbling. It's kind of weird. And we're not done yet though, because um, although uh, now we got this wobbly effect with the Vorno texture, I do want to affect the slash, like how it rotates. So if you actually go over here, rotation, I believe it's not this. Um, is it Y value? Yeah, it's Y value. So basically, if you change this Y value, what something weird happened. Okay, yeah, sorry for a bit of um, the... Okay, so yeah, I just had a bit of an issue. It's probably something you guys don't have to worry because I just misclicked something really weird. But anyways, now we need to basically change the shape of the slash and maybe stretch it a bit and all of that. So what we want to do is actually go to keyframe one, drag this blue thing here. We're actually going to stretch this uh, slash. So if you actually go to scale, and change this x value. I believe it should actually like um, change like the scale of this slash. So if we change this to maybe like um, let's see. I think we should just keep it one. But let's say and it, but before that we need to add a, insert a keyframe. So we're gonna right click here, insert keyframe, and then after that we need to go all the way um, to maybe like 15. I'm gonna do 15. Or actually, no, 25, 25. And then basically, let's go back here. Uh, we're gonna actually change the scale to like 0 0.8. So now if you actually look at this, it definitely stretched a bit more. Actually, I think 0 0.8 is a bit too much. So 0 0.9, yeah, 0 0.9 is much better. And after that, um, we're gonna insert a keyframe I believe since this is yellow, it should have inserted a keyframe. And then we're gonna go all the way down here, 64. And I'm just gonna change this just a tiny bit, just a tiny, tiny, tiny bit. So like 930. So you can see how like uh, now the slash kind of rotates. So actually, let's see. So the problem here though is that it's not fast enough. And that's a huge problem. Because when you do a slash, I feel like the slash and move rotate like really fast in the beginning and it kind of like slow down. So what we need to do here is go back to layout. I'm actually gonna move this marker a uh, bit this way, maybe like right here. And let's see, go to render mode. And this one's a bit too fast. Actually no, this one's okay. And you can now see that the slash is rotating. But if you look carefully, this slash is like rotating really fast and all of a sudden it has this constant slow speed. And the reason because um, this happens is because you need to adjust the acceleration of the speed or the change in values. So what you need to do here is go to layout of tab, click this time button and click graph editor. And we're actually going to click down here, shade node. I actually go back to shade editor. Make sure you only select this mapping node. Go back here. Actually go back here. Make sure you know which value you're changing. I'm gonna be changing the X. So what I'm gonna be doing is locking this so I don't change these other values. 
And now I just have this. So now I have this. Um, I basically need to adjust this line here so I can make this work. So as you can see, it's like really fast. Um, this one just looks a bit weird. So what I'm gonna do is here is take this thing. I can hold command so I can actually select one of these points. Or just, actually not hold command, just select one. And then maybe drag this and make, basically change this. Okay, so after doing some changes, it still doesn't look that great, um, even with the scale. So what we need to do is actually like um, change some values to make this rotate a bit more. So we're gonna go back. What we're gonna do is go back here. We're actually gonna change this graph editor to timeline. And then we're gonna move this blue thing here all the way to keyframe one. Click shading editor. And basically we're gonna adjust this location um, so we can adjust where the slash will be. So we're gonna actually add, um, insert a keyframe here. We're gonna go all the way down here, 64. And I'm just gonna move this a tiny bit, so like 0 0.1, and let's see what happens. So as you can see, this is actually kind of going backward, which is definitely not what we want. So we're gonna go back here, keyframe 64, and we're gonna actually make this negative. So now you can see the slash is actually moving, but actually it's not moving really fast in the beginning. It's kind of like the same problem as uh, what I had with this, um, basically the scaling. So what I need to do is go back to shading, um, basically move this blue thing to like keyframe 13 right here where um, I basically added all of my fast stuff here. Um, not sure if I said that correctly, uh, but basically I'm gonna actually adjust this Maybe make this 0 0.5. Actually, I did that wrong, not 0 0.5. Move this here, keyframe 13. Um, I'm actually gonna make this negative um, 0 0.03. Actually, not negative 0 0.3. We need to make this negative 0 0.07. Yeah, now, now you can see how the slash is like really fast in the beginning and it's later like um, kind of disappears. So now looking back at this, you can see like the vernal texture, it's like really unsmooth. I actually kind of screwed up here by adding this angle. So what I'm actually gonna do is adjust this again. So actually I'm gonna go back to 64 and adjust this. So yeah, basically this whole process is all about just adjusting values just to see like how it works. Um, because it's not going to be perfect. Um, but yeah. Now, I think this looks pretty good. So if you actually go back to layout here and click this, you can see your whole animation. And if you're pretty satisfied with this, then I think it's all good. So when I was actually recording this, I was, I was actually pretty tired because I was actually just kind of recording um, this last tutorial the whole day. And also I actually took a swift test